Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and today we're coming to you from InterSolar 2024, the solar conference here in San Diego. And this afternoon I'm joined by Tristan Contra from Geniverse, and we're looking at the new Geniverse solar and energy storage system. So Tristan, good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm um, really excited to be releasing this product. This is our new DC coupled residential grid tied energy storage system. Our company um, is very well versed in retail energy storage products. So home storage batteries that end consumers low point of entry can just buy from Home Depot, Costco, um, and have access to backup power during a grid outage. But this is our grid tied system. So what we have here is our hybrid inverter. It's rated for 8,000 watts. And then we have our 20 kilowatt hour power pillar, which is a stackable plug and play battery system, as well as the 15 kilowatt hour and 10 kilowatt hour, um, which all pair with our inverter. Yeah. Great, great. So yeah, Tristan, I mean, when I, when I first saw the product and I saw some of the branding here with, with, uh, in synergy with Jackery, you know, I know one of the first things I thought was, oh, Jackery, these are the, the portable, you know, portable off-the-shelf solar generators, right? Something you can just buy and you can put to use right away. Great for uh, portable, great for smaller loads, right? Maybe you're taking a camping trip or something like that, you need to power a small refrigerator or freezer, but it's not really going to do anything as far as a whole house backup. And so now, of course, what we're seeing, the trend here in the industry is, more of a, what I would call more of like all-in-one solutions and, and just higher capacity solutions, uh, systems that can do whole house or a large portion of the house, not just one or two outlets. And so if you can kind of walk us through the basic components here, how, how is the system architected? Yeah, um, so this is our hybrid inverter, which basically is the brains and the controller of the system. So we have all of the necessary terminals here that any all inverter would have. Uh, we have our DC input for the battery system, we have the four MPPTs for the PV system. Um, we have our grid input, and then we have a generator input as well. So this will work with a two-wire start or any portable generator, uh, so long as you have code compliant over current protection. I have to say that for the, the wheeled gasoline ones. <laughs> and then we also have two emergency power supply terminals. So what that actually means is you have the ability to load shed um, specific loads that might be less important uh, in a grid outage. So each is rated for 40 amps. So the inverter can output 8,000 watts to both grid tied and the protected loads. But we want to separate specific backup loads depending on their importance to maximize their runtime. So everything is here in the inverter. Um, it's very easy for installers to just land all of their connections in one place, um, saving time and you know really creating like a lot of options for any end user specific needs. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's another trend that I'm starting to notice again now is is the the integration of what what traditionally would be the inverter, a separate component, and then you'd have a separate transfer switch or gateway, and you'd have to run conduits and circuits between both of them. Now you basically have all your switching. Uh, as well as the inverter itself in a single enclosure, which again, we're all, get, all gets back to speed of installation, clen cleanliness of the final installation. Definitely, I mean, that's the major intention with uh, the DC coupled system and utilizing hybrid inverter, right? So we are very competitive in, in cost uh, as a result of the, lower, the fewer components, um, as well as the ease of installation. So, you know, when you're on site here, you're not mounting all of those extra boxes, you're just doing your PV, um, and then we have our plug and play battery, which is even, you know, expedites the installation even further. So with this, there's no exposed terminals, like I mentioned. Um, everything just sits right on top of one another. Um, and this has one of the highest kilowatt hours per cubic foot out of any other product out there. So as we know, there's a lot of challenges to put a high amount of storage capacity on homes with their, you know, rel like relation to doors and windows and other fire code. So we think that this is a really great solution that is aesthetically pleasing that allows installers to quickly and efficiently install high capacity uh, on residential. Yep, yep. And you know, of course, one advantage as a former installer, I know one advantage having the modular battery design means that you don't have one 
gigantic 300, 400 pound piece of equipment, rather you have individual, well, how, how, how heavy is the heaviest individual component here? Yeah, that's a great point. So uh, each battery module is 110 pounds, so very easy for two people to just lift and stack on to the, the next module. Um, it's much safer than you know hoisting a 400 pound battery and trying to wall mount that. Um, so safety is a major concern for any contractor out there. I mean, we want crews to be safe, we want them to be efficient with their time, and this type of um, design really you know, benefits that. And so we've gotten great feedback from our installers about the ease and as well as, well as transporting the equipment, which is another factor. These boxes are small, can fit in vans easily, um, and you, know, you can really get the job done quickly. Yeah, and that, that's important, and I'm glad to hear more of that language from you because a lot of the technology, I think when it first came to market, we were talking about what all the great features were for consumers, but it was almost like the installers got left out of the conversation, right? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's the installers, the contractors that are going to make this work for a homeowner. Mm -hmm. They've got to actually be able to, to deliver this equipment and successfully install it, connect it to that homeowner's electrical system. And so I think one of the things that, that the industry as a whole is dealing with now is, is how do we help installers be able to install solar in storage as predictably, as profitably as they've been able to install grid tie only solar in the past. Because frankly, if they can't be successful at this, it's not going to work long term. The technology is not going to reach its full potential. What are some other things that you've incorporated into your design that help for faster, more efficient installations? Yeah, I mean, in terms of our design, like I think the fastest part of our installation is that modular component. But I think to your point, um, in situations like NIM 3.0, we see battery attachment rates really increasing. And so having this all-in-one inverter um, with all of its integration built into these terminals allows for a much quicker total system installation. So when you think about you know, bringing everything to just one place, to one box, that really moves the installation faster. And then, as you can see here, these are very simple terminals. We actually have pre-manufactured wires that will go and land here. So, you know, 30 minutes or less, basically. Um, I think some other major design considerations that are important are the multiple MPPTs that we have. They do have a high voltage range, so between 120 and 500 volts really helps to, you know, uh, mitigate any shading concerns. Um, you also have the ability to use any type of RSD, so there are some out there with optimization if you're really in a pickle and shading's a really serious concern, you're still trying to get the job done. Um, another really important factor about our product is its ability to work in self-consumption only. So we start to see a lot of California installers actually moving away from backup, um, and, but still adding a battery for grid arbitrage. And so we think, like, to your point, if you wanted to use that with other major competitors, transfer switches and other things, you know, might be necessary if you're doing like a sunlight backup system or something like that. But here, our inverter and battery are already ready to go and you can maximize you know, power that you've generated and stored at night. Um, as well as you know, supplying major loads that might be you know, bill killers, right? Like during grid connected times. Um, another major factor about the inverter, which is interesting, kind of on a different footprint, uh, is that we have two EPS terminals. So I touched on that and you can actually see here that these are listed on our single line diagram. Now these are going to be your critical loads, but you can actually separate them into the most important loads. So depending on the state of charge of the battery, it will supply to both of these panels. But for example, in a very prolonged grid outage, um, you can program a specific state of charge to release or shed that priority two panel. Um, and that maximizes the runtime on your really you know, critical uh, circuits. That might be your bedroom lights or your um, your kitchen appliances, things like that. So that is a very simple way for homeowners to, you know, not have to go into an app or anything, um, but maintain, you know, backup loads being energized for a long, long outage. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, that's one of the things that I think really goes into a successful solar and storage implementation is some sort of load control that can be done intelligently. So exactly as you said, if you get into a position, energy becomes very scarce, you need to stretch running time for the most critical items, just go ahead and shed the non-critical items so that you can have more running time for, let's say, the refrigerator or the water pump, which you need, may not necessarily need the clothes dryer right. you know, in an emergency. Yeah, and I mean, overall, I think that our system is best designed for installers that are focused on essential backup 
for homeowners. We're not chasing the elusive whole home backup with this product line. Um, you know, we have to be clear about that. This is not going to run your HVAC unit, but what this is going to give you is, you know, the ability to do grid arbitrage when you are grid connected and have power during the outages that may not be more than a day or things like that for, for the essentials. And I think it's really important for installers to have that conversation with the end customer because oftentimes that's not well described and you know you can have a negative a negative experience because you know you're not able to power everything. And that might not be related to product. As we know there's a lot of limitations with main service panels. There's a lot of other limitations with site specific challenges that even if you have as many you know, whatever type of battery, um, you're really left with an essential load backup. And that's our bread and butter. That's what we're very focused on. And, you know, we're, we're really, really proud to have a cost efficient solution for, for those types of applications, yeah. So let's let's get into the, the specs a little bit now, because yeah. I know the audience is going to ask, okay, what, what are the exact numbers here? <laughs> yeah, so so we, we talked about the battery. You've got five kilowatt hours per battery module, up to four battery modules per stack. So basically up to 20 kilowatt hours per stack. Correct, and you're able to pair three of the 20 kilowatt hour stacks to a single inverter, so up to 60 kilowatt hours of total storage. Now we know that with the DC coupled system, that's only going to increase your capacity. It's not going to increase the power output. But what we, you know, depending on the longevity or the needs, that, that may be beneficial to, to individuals. Yep. So that's actually where I was going next. So let's, let's talk numbers on the inverter then. What are the power ratings, input and output? Yeah, so the input rating is the same as the output. So, well, the output rating is 8,000 watts. Okay. So when you're pushing power out of the inverter, the continuous output's 8,000 watts. You can do 125% of that power output for up to one minute, and then 150% surge for up to one second. So we do have the ability to basically surge 50 amps for one second. Um, that's why we're not really focused on HVAC and other large inductive loads. We're focused on 120 volt circuits, uh, really essential things that you know don't require a lot of power to, to start up. Now again, like I mentioned, they'll still work grid connected. Um, in terms of the PV input, uh, the max kilowatt system size is 12 kilowatts DC. So it's a fairly sizable residential solar system, but you know anything larger than that, you may require two inverters. Um, but we're again, we're focused on the average we see is like between six and 10 kilowatts on a suburban home. So we feel like pretty comfortable there. Um, in terms of the grid input, we like to be on uh, basically 60 amps. We, our bypass is rated for 100 amps, um, but we do believe, like considering the output, that 60 amps is kind of the magic number for you know tying to to the grid. Yeah. Now I know you can't give me specific pricing like this, but I know a lot of folks out there are going to want to know how much does it cost, especially when we're talking about hey, this is going to be one of the most cost efficient or the most cost efficient solar system. So let's say if we're talking about like a, a typical, let's say eight kilowatt typical residential system here in California, using your system compared to say using uh, the Enphase system, what what could a, a homeowner or an installer expect in general range in terms of price difference? Yeah, that's a really great question. I mean, we've done a lot of comparisons with other major players and we respect everyone in the field. Um, I, what I can say is if you're doing a new solar plus storage system in California and to end phase is a great example, we're 20% lower in cost. Um, there's a few ways we do that, uh, but one that's really important is we don't go through distribution. We actually will sell directly to our installer from our point of contact in the Bay Area or in Los Angeles. Um, we are working on other par points of distribution as we move throughout the country, but we do feel going directly to our installers does help drive down the cost. And then the other major component is the ease of installation. Um, it's very quick, you know, commissioning time, 15 minutes, uh, your guys are in the field for less time and that saves, that saves you money. So, you know, that, pass, that savings can essentially be passed on to the end customer or to the installer. Uh, it's up to them how they want to distribute that pricing, but we are um, significantly lower than major competitors. Yeah. That's great. And then la last question for you, Tristan. Uh, as far as the app, what features and what information is available for the homeowner? What's, what's available on the app? And then also, what is the commissioning process like as far as setting it up for the installer the first time? Yeah, that's a great question. So the commissioning process, I'll start there, actually takes place at the inverter. 
So with this LCD screen, they're able to go through the basic settings. You know, you set the date and time. You set the, uh, the work function, so self-consumption, time of use, or backup only, whichever mode. Um, and a few other basic things, and you're, you're done in about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, there's also a lot of technical data that can be displayed here if you needed to service the system at some point. Um, but from there, the app, otherwise, yeah, the, the monitoring app will have the power flow between your solar system, the battery, the grid, and your home loads. Um, also, real-time data, you know, you can get as, as intricate as you would like um, to see the, that power graph and things like that. Um, in terms of, you know, adjusting features, the installer is able to update settings that were initially commissioned on the inverter through the app. So for example, if you know they you know for some reason want to change to a backup only, the homeowner or the installer has the ability to do that. Yeah. So our app is mostly focused on monitoring, but with some element of user control. Yeah. Excellent. Well, folks, this has been an introduction to the Geniverse Solar and Energy Storage System. Again, this is in synergy with Jackery, so basically same company relationship with Jackery, which you may know from some of the portal, portable rugged solar generator product, products. Uh, but again, folks, I think this is in line with the trend that we're seeing, which is the trend towards having all the major system components come from one manufacturer, inverter, battery, transfer switch, app, have that all come from one company, so you can have a consistency of user experience and hopefully a consistency of technical support uh, and, uh, and fleet maintenance for the installer as well. Uh, Tristan, is there anything else that the audience should know about the Geniverse system? Well, I think it's important to, to acknowledge that we have been in this space a long time. And, and as multiple other companies are entering this market, you know, Geniverse and Jackery both have been very well established um, in that portable sector. You know, we're in many countries and we've been in this business a long time. And so we're really just excited to be able to present, like you mentioned, a, a product that allows to power more loads for longer periods of time. And our, our organization, is excited also to be working with installers and, and EPCs. Um, you know, going business to business is something we're really focused on and we really plan to have a lot of support related to that. Um, we have our dedicated single line diagram review, we have our US-based installer support, um, and our own distribution directly to them. So we're just really, you know, an established brand that's focused on gaining partners, gaining some market share, and at the end of the day, providing a, a solution to, to end customers, um, whether it's to save them money or to have you know, power in, in the time of need. Excellent. Well, again, folks, this has been a brief discussion with Tristan Cronshaw, product manager here at Geniverse. And uh, this has been an uh, introduction to the Geniverse Solar and Energy Storage System. Uh, that pretty much does it for today's video. Uh, but hey, guys, if you're getting good value from the videos that you're watching on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and also hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos coming out, we've got new products, we've got product updates. That way you can stay up to date with the latest technology. Uh, with that, I'll let you all go. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your product or your business or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, feel free to reach out to us at the link below so you can set up a call with our media team to talk about your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the US residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you'd like to get your product, business, or technology in front of our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our media team at the link below or email media at solarsurge.net.